A couple of weeks ago, I was given the chance to come out to El Duez, so of course, I jumped at the opportunity. They later told me it would be at the end of the ski season. Nonetheless, I thought it would be a really cool idea. I mean, literally a really cool idea, because it is snowing right now. Anyway, today, I'm going to be comparing El Duez and El de Zwift to see what the differences really are. Back in the spring of 2018, Zwift launched a major new course extension, Alpe de Zwift, the longest, toughest climb on Zwift, and modelled on the iconic Alpe d'Huez, the famous mountaintop finish in the Tour de France. The length, 12.5 kilometres. The gradient, 8.5%. And how many hairpins does it have? Well, it's got 21, just like the real climb. Apparently, Zwift took GPS data from the actual climb and modelled Alpe de Zwift around that. The idea behind it was to give Zwifters a super tough climbing challenge and a target to aim for, as you need to be at level 12 or above to unlock it, but also to extend on the training element of Zwift, as who doesn't get super fit by riding in super tough mountains? And some of us may need to practice for a sportif or grand fondo that we've booked in the mountains, even though we don't live near any. Having never ridden Alpe de Zwift or Alpe d'Huez, I thought I was the perfect candidate to see how the two really compare, hence why I was riding it in the snow whilst it was still ski season. The first obvious difference is I'm wearing a lot more clothing out here, and that's because cycling season doesn't really get going until around mid-May over here at Alpe d'Huez, and then it continues until October time. And the rest of the year, if you hadn't already guessed, Alpe d'Huez is actually a ski resort, which means when I get to the top in a minute, it's gonna be pretty fresh. How about we check in with indoor Chris and see how he's looking? Right, that is 6.9 of my seven kilometer warm-up, and I'm good to go. Right, well, if you're ready, I'm ready. Three, two, one, go. You certainly notice on the corners it really backs off just like in real life you get these brief moments of respite where you either have to change your gear to keep up with your cadence or you can back off and have as i said a little bit of respite which really helped me in real life so i've actually changed one of the settings in zwift which isn't something i'd normally do what i've done is up the gradient effect to 100 and that will replicate my body weight almost exactly going on feel and it'll mean the wahoo kick climb will be controlled to really mimic that gradient that you would be feeling in real life. And I have to say, I'm changing gear quite a lot because of it. And you, are, you can tell I'm out of breath. Right, I'm a fair way up the climb now. I'm starting to find out pretty hard, to be honest. There's a few things I'm interested in though. Indoors versus outdoors, seated versus standing. Outside, I'm in the saddle, out the saddle, finding it hard to try and find that rhythm that I'm looking for. And I'm in first, second, and third gear. So is that the same indoors? The altitude's starting to take its toll a little bit. I find it a little bit harder to breathe out here. And then there's the cooling as well. I'm actually slightly overdressed. And well, indoors, I can just crank the fan up. Anyway, let's find out how it's going back at the studio. So I'm about 20 minutes in now, 21 minutes to be exact, and I've averaged to within one watt of what I managed to maintain outside. On the day outside, I actually thought that was a little bit ambitious at the time, but 329 indoors, 328 outside after 20 minutes is right where you want to be really, for me, for this effort to make it repeatable. 
One thing I'm noticing, as I mentioned before, is the differences in the corners. You know, just like in real life, you build up a bit of momentum, slinging shot yourself into the next bit of gradient. And just like in real life, talking is getting really hard. Except here, it's because of the effort, I'm building up a bit of heat, and outside it's because of the altitude. But that makes it really quite comparable, actually. That's something I didn't expect. I actually thought it would be easier. It's not easy at all. Right, I mentioned a couple of corners ago that are starting to feel nice and warm, and that's still the case. It has just started snowing, although that's eased off again a little bit, which means I'm not really looking forward to the descent anymore, so I think I'll be jumping into our higher car. What the snowstorm did do is add to the epic atmosphere that this mountain has. Le Mans Donhino, Pantani, Armstrong, even Geraint Thomas last year. It's a phenomenal mountain if you're a cycling fan. You may not get that on Zwift, but what you do get is perfectly controlled temperature, something that right now I quite enjoy. So at this point in the video, I've been planning to tell you about why Up to Ed is such a bucketless climb, if you will. But to be really honest, I'm gonna do that in a minute and I've caught my breath because this is seriously hard going. Alpe d'Huez is a bucket list climb, but what does that make Alpe de Zwift? Well, it doesn't have the history, but the effort is so similar, you definitely get a sense that you're achieving something by riding up it. I think part of what makes Alpe d'Huez a bucket list climb is because of how much effort it takes to get there. If you live in Grenoble just down the road, you probably take it for granted, whereas it took me 10 hours to get there. Alpe de Zwift, meanwhile, once you've reached level 12, which takes a little bit of commitment on Zwift, is then on your virtual doorstep, meaning you've got access to it whenever you please. So would it be good for you? Undoubtedly, yes. Sustained efforts like this one, which might take between 45 minutes and an hour and a half, depending on your fitness level, are incredibly potent. Right, in the final kilometer now, and just like in the real one, I'm falling apart, like properly falling apart. All right, 191. Oh, I started to question if I'd ever make it to the top, whereas at least on here, I know I should be able to because I've done it once in real life. And finally, I've made it to the top of Alpe d'Huez. I've had a few minutes now to catch my breath and recover from the effort because it was genuinely really, really hard. I paced it a little bit ambitiously and with the altitude, I really started to suffer in that final 15 minutes. Now I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. I've actually come a little bit further up the climb than where Alpe d'Huez finishes, but I'm only gonna get one chance to come here and ride in the winter. And I wanted to see what the real finish was like where the Tour de France goes to. Anyway, how about we find out how I've gotten on back in the studio. Right, that's it, I made it to the top. And one thing I noticed was the perception of time. On the left-hand side of the screen, I've got all the corners being ticked off in front of me, whereas when I rode it blind in real life, I had no idea how much further it was to the next corner. Now, that's all great. At one point, I came undone, because I was like, ah, oh, 500 meters. I'm a sprinter, I can do 500 meters. Forgetting that 500 meters after 45 minutes flat out, up a mountain, it doesn't last the short amount of time that a flat sprint does. So I ended up really clinging on for grim death. Got my heart rate right up to 200, which is higher than I had outside. 
However, outside there's less oxygen, and I know from personal experience I can't quite push that high at altitude. Oh, I need to recover now, and then we're going to update you with some of the stats from inside versus outside. So the power numbers, the cadence, the heart rate, and you'll see which one was fastest. I'm now showered and changed, but what have I learned? Well, the difference in my heart rate was only one beat per minute on the average. So 174 outside versus 173 indoors. Although weirdly, my heart rate indoors did creep up a little bit higher towards the end. That's mainly because despite our best efforts with the air conditioning, it didn't want to play with us at all. So we set it to 17 degrees, but by the end of Alp de Zwift, my temperature indoors was actually 24 degrees, and I'm not a big fan of the heat. When we look at power numbers then, they were again nigh on identical, 328 outdoors and 327 indoors, which shows that the effort was basically exactly the same. The only difference though did come from cadence. So I had 83 indoors and I had 76 outside. When I'm indoors, I do tend to pedal that little bit faster and I'm a little bit smoother. But when I'm outside, I often shift it into the big ring, especially out of some of those corners, drop it down a couple of cogs on the back and then stand up for around 30 to 60 seconds, mainly to give my muscles a bit of a rest. There was one difference though, and that was the speed that it took to actually climb Alp de Zwift versus Alp de Indoors, it took 47 minutes and 30 seconds, whereas outside, it was closer to 52 minutes. Now there are loads of reasons for this, not least the wind direction, the air density, the wind speed, and the fact that it was actually a lot colder outside, so therefore I had on loads more clothing. I had a bottle on my bike, so that would make my bike heavier than my virtual bike, which was actually, if anything, a little bit lighter than my real world one. But to answer a question that I briefly touched on earlier, if I was heading out to Alpe d'Huez in the summer and I only had Alpe de Zwift to train on, would it be a suitable method for me to get fit for Alpe d'Huez? Well, absolutely. The demands are exactly the same. The only difference being that you don't lose oxygen on Alpe de Zwift. The physical exertion was again exactly the same and the experience and the feeling in my legs was identical. The only difference being I could get straight off my bike and go and have a nice warm shower from Alpe de Zwift. If you enjoyed this video, do give it a big thumbs up and to check out more training videos on the channel, click down here.